Thank you. That's very kind of you to give me such a warm welcome. Um, it's obviously a real privilege to be at an Ember meetup talking about um, Redux. I don't know anything about Ember. Jamie said to me, sometimes speakers come who aren't talking about Ember and they try and get Ember in there somehow. That's not going to happen. I've <laughs> <laughs> nothing to give you on that. Um, so instead, I'm, I'm talking about Redux. This talk's called The Art of Reduction. I don't think anything's left in this talk after I reduced all the um, bits I didn't need that has anything to do with that title. Maybe it should be called just what I learned about Redux over the last few months. That might be a better title. Uh, so uh, how many people here have heard of Redux? Mm -hmm. And uh, just like be interactive and um, tell me what Redux is. Like what is it to you? What have you heard from this side of the, uh, the JavaScript community? <laughs> Dan Abramov, yeah, very bright guy. Works at Facebook or something? Facebook person. Is it a version of Flux? It, it is, um, yeah. So when Facebook created React, um, they, they had a, a system called Redux, which was about having a one-way data flow. And it was a little bit complex. And um, as you mentioned, Dan Abramov um, created an implementation of Redux or something similar um, called, um, of Flux called Redux. Um, so the two words, uh, reducer and flux, kind of get mixed together and you get this word redux, which is a library, and we'll come on to reducers in a second. Um, this is me. Um, I'm Daniel John Grant on Twitter. I work at a company called Lost My Name. We make um, magical bedtimes for children. We empower adults to have special superpowers to um, you know, make these special magical moments with their kids. Um, I also run a meetup called um, London Algorithms. Uh, so if you're interested in either, this is the Lost My Name website. Um, these are two of the books we make. Um, and you can go on there and um, create a book for a kid in your life. And um, this is the London Algorithms meetup. I set up this group because I was interested in learning algorithms. I don't know anything about algorithms. Um, and I thought maybe I could just invite some other people to teach me um, about algorithms. So if you want to come to that, you're very welcome. Um, be lovely to have you. So, the problem and the reason why um, we started using uh, Redux at Lost My Name. Functions like this. Um, update dom de dom So, uh, we're going to go through the DOM, we're going to find an element, and we're going to get a value. Now, what's in the DOM at this point in time? It could be anything. Uh, maybe there's another library that's mutating the DOM. Maybe another developer on the team has created another function of their own, and they've changed that value. So we don't really know what that value is going to be. It's something in the bigger, bigger context of our, of our application. Can't predict what it is. Um, and then we do something with it. So we maybe like multiply that value by Dave, because you can do that in JavaScript. And we'll find another element in the DOM, and we'll set its value to a new value. And that's a sad face, because it's a side effect um, so we call this function. We don't know quite what the input is going to be going into the function because we didn't provide it. We pulled it out of the DOM. And we don't really know what it's going to do either. Um, it's got this side effect. So Redux tries to um, solve that. This is my visualization of um, functional programming. And I'm not going to go very deep into any of these concepts simply because I don't have the ability to. Um, but this is a pure function, a calculator that does one function. So you pass it in an input of four, and you press, you call the function, and it gives you uh, four times two, which is eight. And you can run that function as many times as you want with the same input, and it's always going to give you the same output, which means that this function is very predictable. Uh, predictable is good. So what is Redux? Um, if you go onto the Redux website, you'll find this description. It says it's a predictable state container. Predictable state container, what might that look like? Well, um, a container could be this object here. And this could represent the state of our web app. We've got some entities, so some users, maybe some products. And then there's other bits of state on the web app, not just um, the data that we're representing throughout the, the app. Maybe there's um, some components. So we have a, uh, an object of components, and maybe our gallery component's got some items, and there's some properties for each of those items, say it's active or it's highlighted or something like that. So that could be our state object. And this is one of the big principles of Redux is that it has a global um, store or a global state object. 
So one object with everything, every bit of state in your application. And the way um, in Redux that we um, implement interactivity and that the state can advance is with this um, simple premise that you take the current state, an action is applied, and what is returned is a new version of the state. We never um, ever mutate the state. Um, you always get a new version of the state. So action um, applied to the existing state will return a new version of the state. And that's how we advance um, the application forward. So I've tried to visualize this. And I give full credit to uh, Chris Pierce, who uh, did a talk on Redux um, after I'd initially tried to do this talk. And um, I looked at his slides and I thought, so much better. Um, so I've, I've copied this um, visualization roughly from, um, from his slides, which I've uh, referenced at the end of these slides. And you can, you can look at those if you like. It's a very good talk. Uh, so here's the cycle in Redux. This is Redux's version of Flux. Um, an action is dispatched. So we want to do something. So here's the code. Can you see the code at the bottom there? Or shall I bring it up a bit? Is that a yes or a no? It's fine. Okay. Um, so we have a, a store. Um, that's what Redux gives us. And we'll uh, dispatch an action into the store. So here, this action is a type of add person. And it has a value. And the value is Lily. So we expect that Lily is going to get added into our store state. That gets consumed by a reducer. Uh, a reducer is a pure function that accepts uh, the current state and an action that's being dispatched at that point in time. Uh, so in our reducer here, uh, the current state is um, passed into it. And when uh, the reducer is called with that previous action, so uh, this one here, um, it will return a new version of the state. Now, just notice here that I'm not mutating the state. We're using the array spread operator here to create a new array. It's got the existing um, state in there. And we're just appending onto that array or concatenating uh, and the new value, which is Lily. Now, something needs to happen. Um, so we've translated the state. We've created a new version of the state. We want to do something within our application because the state has changed. So we set up sub subscribers. And here we've got a simple method on the store called subscribe. And we pass in a function. And my function here, I've just called it render app. And we'll come back to that in a sec. Then we have selectors. And these are really useful. And it took me a while to realize the importance of these. Uh, but if your state object could be likened to a local database for your application, selectors are like queries on that database. And they're just an efficient way of um, getting um, some information out of the state that may not be um, immediately uh, available from the current structure. So rather than forming a state object that's very specific to your implementation, you write these queries using selectors. So here we want to get the first person um, in our state array. Uh, so simple uh, function that returns the first item in that array. And then we can use that in the view. Uh, so when we set up a subscriber, it listens to every state change, and it calls that render app function. Um, and we'll just use a store.getState method here um, to get a state. We pass it into the selector, which is our query into our local state. And we'll render it to the app. And here, I'm just going to render it to the console. Um, and that's a great thing about Redux. It's not tied to any particular um, UI framework. In fact, it doesn't even need to be UI. You could use it um, to turn on your lights in your house or to um, access the web audio API or anything. OK. Anyone asking questions on this? I'm totally happy to be interrupted. Go. So the store is global then? Is store is global. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, it is in this example. Uh, in, say, if you're using Redux with React, you would use the Redux React um, bindings. And then um, you're not using it globally. Um, so there's different ways to um, do it. But effectively, we talk about a global store in Redux um, in that every area of the application has access to the same state object. 
Um, however you expose that inside of your um, web application, it may differ. And nothing prevents you from having more than one store? You always have one store per application. Um, so uh, an example where you might have two stores is you have a, a game where there's a different state on, say, your server as there is to the client. So you might have multiple players. Uh, so each client maybe has its own store, and the server has its own store, which knows certain things that each client doesn't know. Uh, but generally, within each application, there's just one store. Um, so shooting back to this kind of representation of a state, we just chuck everything into this object. It could be a big object, um, but it's fine. They're just references, so it's, um, it's efficient. Uh, okay, so I'm going to kind of show you how this all works a bit um, by kind of implementing um, Redux in um, a little JS bin. Honestly, this could go wrong. And um, the, the likelihood of it going wrong is kind of correlates to the ability of your, um, of the audience to lint um, on the fly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, crowdsource linting. Um, <laughs> Be on, be on your toes here. And if you want to stop me at any point, feel free. So the first thing I'm going to write is a, um, a function, a factory function that's going to create um, a store for us. Okay. Create store. And we'll just kind of figure out which um, version of JavaScript we're writing today. Uh, let's do it like this. And the store is going to accept one argument. Uh, right now, which is going to be a reducer. And I showed you earlier the reducer. It's a way of kind of translating the state. Um, ultimately, in Redux, you end up with one big reducer um, for your application, which can respond to all the different possible actions. Uh, but um, as you learn more about Redux, you find a way to, to compose that reducer. So it accepts a reducer. And yeah, of course. Okay, so we're going to create a store. So first thing our store needs is a, um, it needs to be a state container. So we'll set up our state <coughs> container. Um, that's it there. Uh, that's the state. What, 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 what is it in cost? Ah, uh, okay. So it's a good question. <laughs> um, this is the only um, variable in Redux that will change. But here we're not going to change the state, we're just going to be switching references to different objects. So as we reduce the state, um, we get a new object and we switch the reference to it. I'll show you that. Um, so when we dispatch an action, um, we want to be able to update the state. So we'll have a dispatch method for our store. And it accepts an argument which is an action. Okay. And with that action, it's going to take the existing state, it's going to apply that action to it, and it's going to get some new state. And how do we do that? We use the reducer that, we, that our store's got. So here's our reducer. We give it a state, the existing state, which is that uh, global store up there. And we apply an action to it. And then we're just going to switch out that reference. So state now becomes this new state here. Go. So we are writing Redux. We, yes, I'm writing Redux here. Yeah, um, it's very simple. Um, obviously, if I was writing Ember right now, this would be a long meetup. <laughs> uh, but Redux is a lot smaller. I mean, they're not really comparable. Um, gosh, I wish we had some of the uh, the uh, tooling <laughs> that Ember has for um, these sorts of projects. So the next one we want is just the ability to get the state. This is pretty simple. Um, it's just going to return that state object. For us, okay, great. So we now can um, retrieve our state from the store, and we can dispatch actions into the store, which will update the state. Is everyone following so far? Okay. And then finally, we want to be able to notify listeners when the state changes. So we'll just keep a reference to um, a bunch of listeners up here. So that's an array, and we'll create a subscribe method that takes a listener, 
and pushes that listener onto our listeners array. So listeners.push, and we'll just chuck that listener on there. So that's um, allowed us to have a, a store of listeners, um, and we want to call each one whenever the state gets updated. The state gets updated whenever we dispatch a function. So I'll just take the listeners array. I will iterate over it, and we'll just call each listener one by one, like that. Final thing to do is to just export, well, to return all these uh, methods um, when we call the factory function. So we'll return get state, we'll return dispatch, we'll return subscribe. Is there any more? That's it. Are you going to pass the state into each listener? Into each listener. Uh, uh, no, actually. Um, that's not, I mean, you could, I suppose, but the way Redux works is that you'll probably use the store.getState instead um, when you do it. So let's just um, see if any of this worked. It may not have done, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so first thing we want to do is we want to create our store. We'll need to have a reducer ready for it. So a reducer has a very simple function signature. It takes uh, the current state and it takes an action that's being dispatched. And it reduces the state down to a new state um, immutably. So we'll create our application reducer, which is a function that takes a state and an action, and it returns a state. In this case, we're just going to pass the state straight through. So to see if this has worked at all, which I really hope it has, um, because that would be satisfying for me and relieving for you watching, uh, we'll subscribe to the store, subscribe to any state changes, and we'll just pass in a listening function here. And this could be a function that renders your application or does anything. Here I'm just going to print out the state to the console. So we use store get state. And we'll put it to console. Let's just put a label here. Store. OK. No, state. What did you do? Create the store. Good point. Thank you. Good linting. This is what I'm talking about. You, re you really need it. Um, so we need a store. Uh, create store, and we pass in the reducer. And that we do that once. OK, now I'm going to run this code. No errors. It's good. Um, and we'll dispatch an action here. So we'll give the action a type so we can identify what the action is later. Um, I'll just call it add. We'll maybe add some items onto an array. And a value, and I'll just call that please. <laughs> OK. And it's returned us um, as the label state and undefined. There's no state defined, so that's, that's a good sign. Uh, so let's see if we can um, adapt our reducer to do something with that action. So we'll say if the action has a type of add, We'll create a new state. We'll return a new state here. So uh, we'll return a new array. We'll spread over the previous one. And we'll pop onto the end of it the value of this action. And that should get popped onto the end of the array. So run that code again. And call dispatch. And cannot convert undefined to null or object. State is undefined. State is. Here? It's not initialized, I think. Hmm? It's not initialized. When you scroll up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's just empty. State should be in a row. You're right. OK. What I'm going to do here <laughs> is um, we'll pass an initial state. This is actually how Redux is implemented. I was going to try and do it simply, but we'll just keep to the, uh, the rules. And then when we create the store, We'll pass in an initial state, which will just be an empty array. Do, uh, do reducers sometimes have a like default state? That they're yes, they do actually, and that's what I should have put on here. So uh, just to uh, make that just foolproof, uh, we can pass an initial state into our reducer as well. Absolutely right. You're not actually using initial state for anything yeah. yet. Did you probably want to store. It's in create store. That was not being yeah. used. On the dot. Yeah. The, the, the dot blank to ah yes. Point which goes on to, there we go, smashing. You are a good crowd, <laughs> like, uh, way better than fell, I tell you that. Okay.
dispatch state uh, and we have got uh, an item in our array and we can chuck in another one <coughs> and we got so okay so this is Redux um, and like from all your interactions there which I really appreciate I can tell that you've understood it which is amazing that in five minutes uh, we've managed to to write Redux and to understand what it does and actually um, if you want to go to React GitHub slash ReactJS slash Redux and look at the source code, it's not a lot more complicated um, than this. This is essentially the boilerplate of it. Um, how am I doing for time? You're good. What, another five minutes or? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what should we do now? Um, I mean, like, we want, go on. Write React. Write React. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No. Um, let's 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 um let's add another subscriber. Right, react. <laughs> what a joker. Um, now I was just like looking earlier to see if um, there was like any APIs that I could use that um, would provide a different way because I hate doing this thing as like with React and uh, you know even not in an Ember crowd but. Um, I think people need to understand that Redux isn't a React thing. It's great with React, but it can be used in other contexts. So um, let's just find a way of like getting the browser to speak um, the state. I haven't plugged into the audio here, but so we can subscribe to a state change. We're obviously pushing new values onto this array, uh, which is our state. Um, so when we subscribe here, we can get those values, so we'll grab the state, using store get state, and that will give us the latest state object, and uh, just iterate over those and maybe get the browser to speak each one out one by one. So for each um, item, And we'll pass into this speech synthesis, synthesis utterance the item and see if this works. Okay. Daniel. Boom. Guess what name I'm going to do next? Daniel. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and we could do the same here with jQuery. We could, uh, you know, find a, an imp, uh, an element on the page. We could iterate over um, our state object, and we could print out a list of items. And then every time the state updates, our render function here is going to update uh, our view in the application, which is great. Now I mentioned that um, at Lost My Name we um, decided to use Redux. Um, I'll just show you. Um, an example of why it was so useful. I was implementing uh, this little component. This is still written in jQuery, actually. And um, for a while, we uh, just had like a couple of options, which was the name and the gender of the child in the book. And um, we'd create a book based on that. And then we introduced languages. Um, and then we realized that not everyone was um, white. Uh, so we would <laughs> introduce some different uh, characters. Um, so we uh, had these uh, group of characters here, and you could uh, select one. Uh, but the problem was, when writing this component, we realized that if you go back and change the language select here to, say, Spanish, um, we didn't yet have these, um, these adventurers um, available in that language. And so we had to do this. And I, I thought, just doing it in jQuery, once you do some basic stuff, say, you know, click on this thing, show a, um, a mode or whatever, that's great, but once you start having conditions in your user interface where, say, this can't be shown if a certain thing happens elsewhere, it gets really confusing. And so you're going back querying the DOM and then updating this, and it gets very hard to understand. And so Redux is great in that um, you could push all this state into your state object and then just render it um, on the page there. And that's um, proved really useful, and um, I, I, we have a lot less bugs now we're doing that sort of stuff. Okay, I'm going to wrap up. Um, so let's just go over what we learned here. Um, you dispatch an action into the store. The action is a type, and you can pass in extra data as well. That is translated using a reducer, which is a pure function. 
it creates a new version of the state. We have subscribers in our action which respond to state changes, normally to render something. We can use selectors to query our state and pull data out in a certain way. And then we can render um, our state in a view um, using whatever library we want to use, whether it's React or something else. Uh, this is, obviously, this slide deck is written in Redux, and there's some great Redux dev tools. Um, so I can just ping this open here, and you can see that as I've been talking, um, we've been moving this application here in the browser through um, state. And it's, it's kind of blurry here, but each one of uh, these um, sections here is an action that was dispatched. And um, when that action was dispatched, it updated the state and got a new state there. And I can actually go back and rewind um, what's happened um, while we've been here um, because of the fact that Redux at its heart uses functional paradigms. So um, when you uh, call a function, it's entirely predictable. You give it an input, you get the same output. So I could go take all these actions. Actually, I can do this. Um, I can export them here, save them. I could import them in again. And then I could relive this very moment that we had together. And I think it was special, <laughs> and I really thank you for that. Um, and that's uh, the power and the beauty of Redux, um, that it's predictable in this way. Currently, we're not doing anything with this data, uh, but I see a lot of potential to do stuff here. So if there's an error, I think we should be putting that all up to roll bar um, and then being able to retrieve it. It would make debugging super simple because you know, I could take that state object and I could import it into my local dev environment and boom, I've got the browser state right where the user was. Um, as it happens, we're not getting many errors um, anymore, so <laughs> you know, <laughs> benefits of functional programming. <laughs> Uh, closing remarks. Okay, yeah? Um, where do you put your um, request to the server? How do you do async? Yes. Okay. Um, there are a couple of uh, <laughs> libraries for handling async. So, yeah, you're right in, in noticing that a reducer, if it's a pure function, can't have any side effects. So, you can't like, fetch something from outside and you can't like, update some resource. Uh, there's a library called Redux Thunk. Uh, which allows you to do uh, side effects when you dispatch an action. Uh, and there's a library called Redux Sagas, uh, which allows you to do stuff when um, um, actions get um, dispatched and, you know, similar ends. Um, but yeah, that's where I'd start well, if you want to do that sort of stuff. They're not using uh, uh, six generators for this. Redux Sagas uses generators, which yeah. is black magic to me. Yeah, exactly. So as long as you're in the, in the async train, yeah. You'll, you'll be yeah, I think async. I think that's that's why it's much loved. Yeah. Um, the subscriber. Yeah. Feels like to a naive reductor. Mm -hmm. um, just a render loop. I mean, do, is the subscriber where you would maybe split out the actions and, and how? On? So if you if you open up the yeah. on render app. Yeah. At what, why would you subscribe more than just the render of the app? If that makes any sense. Would you have like render nav, render body, render? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, in React, you have one subscriber, right. which renders the entire app. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if you have a different implementation, you might want to have more than one. Yeah. Um, yeah but it, th yeah, it's it's just a. So it's just. It's a, exactly. Right. Yeah. But that is how the, the data gets through. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. So, I mean, it's obviously crucial, but it's just like... It's, a, it's a very small, so trivial thing. You don't so in your day-to-day -day development, you're right. You don't... Presumably that debugger also subscribes. The time traveling debugger you just demonstrated. Does it get in and subscribe? Uh, no. Well? It uses uh, middleware, um, which I won't try and explain. Uh, but it, it's possible. And uh, those libraries I mentioned, Redux Thunk and Redux Saga, both are examples of middleware, right. uh, where you can kind of intercept actions as they come in and do something with it and then just carry on down the cycle. Um, so yeah, there's some su super cool stuff you can do with um, middleware. We wrote a bit of middleware recently, um, which is very simple. It just takes the action and then translates those actions into um, calls to Google Analytics, uh, which was nice because it meant we could remove all those analytics calls out of our kind of DOM work. Um, so rather than having like candle, you know, 
button click and then having us do like an analytics call in there, we could just do it outside somewhere and have like a nice map um, of translating actions. Well, I guess in, in, in Redux land, you would do middleware between an action and reducer rather than multiple subscribers. Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. Subscriber is not a, a big deal. Yep. Yep. You're, you're spot on. Um, yeah, possibly. I think if we, I can't think of an example that you would use in the real world, but yeah, then I mean, there's no reason why you can't have more than one subscriber. Um, it's fine, but typically you're using one rendering library. Uh, you're talking about optimization, yeah, because this, the, so this is where um, selectors um, can kill you because you pass into your selector state, and as you kind of eruditely point out, um, if the state changes like loads of times, which it will in a kind of a, an advanced app, that function is going to get called all the time. So there's a library called reselect, which allows you to memoize that function um, and only call it when the particular portion of the state that you're interested in has changed. Um, so you tend to make those kind of optimizations in that way. Um, I think we'll have to leave it there so we can get on to the next talk. Cool. If everyone could give a thank you. Account.